What's up everybody, it's Jimmy, and in today's video we're going to be talking about the unforgettable mistake that costs UW more than just the nation's top recruit. Now if you've been following high school basketball, you know that Michael Porter Jr. is a phenom. He's the best player in the country, and you also know that he committed to UW, then decommitted, then committed to Missouri. Now, this doesn't seem like a big deal. Obviously, they lost the top recruit, but let me break down why this is terrible for UW's program and why they should have never fired their head coach. Now, as I just said, the reason why Michael Porter Jr. decommitted was because they fired their head coach, Romar, who Michael Porter actually had close ties to. He's actually one of the reasons why the Porter family moved to Washington in the first place. Now, the UW program hasn't been the best in the past decade, but with Marco Fultz leaving this year and the program heading in the right direction, this would have been the perfect time for Michael Porter Jr. and the rest of his supporting cast to come in and turn the program around under Romar's coaching. Now let me break down why this was such a big mistake for UW. They not only lost the nation's top recruit in Michael Porter Jr., the best recruit to ever commit to UW, they also lost Jonte Porter, Michael Porter's little brother, the 18th best junior in the country. They lost Dejon Davis, another top recruit to Stanford, and they also lost Blake Harris, another top 100 recruit. This dropped their recruiting class from 4th in the country to 87th. Now the one thing that really caught me off guard was the fact that the athletic director was very aware that a lot of these recruits would be decommitting once they found out that their head coach was fired. In fact, she even stated that she would grant full release to any players who met the new head coach and didn't want to play for UW anymore. Now granted, Romar did have a terrible 2017 season, finishing conference play at 2-16. He has had the second highest win percentage for a head coach in the program's history, and he has had a history of leading young men into the draft, such as Brandon Roy, Nate Robinson, Isaiah Thomas, Markel Fultz, just to name a few. But instead of letting Romar get one more shot with the best recruiting class in the program's history and one of the best in the country, the AD decided to pull the plug on the whole thing. Now, this is a plan that's obviously been going down for the past few years with Romar and the Porter family. In fact, Michael Porter's dad also coaches within the men's basketball program at UW. Now, this wouldn't have been that big of a deal if UW was a powerhouse and they could just come back next year and get the next top recruit. But they're not. In fact, UW is currently ranked 210th in the country in college programs. The 210th best team in the country did not allow the fourth best recruiting class to happen. That's ridiculous. Now, sure, this class may have not made a big difference, but if you've seen Porter play, you know that he's one of the best high school players we've ever seen. A 6'10 forward that has proven himself to be a winner is not something you just pass up on because you feel your men's coach did not meet expectations on the court. And if you look even further ahead, imagine what this could have done to the men's program. Of course, Porter would have been a one and done, but he would have brought a lot of attention to the UW's program. With the number four recruiting class and some of the supporting players that they had coming back from last year, I could very well see that team that could have happened make it to something like the Sweet 16, maybe the Elite Eight with Porter behind them. Now that they've lost almost all of their recruits and dropped to the 87th recruiting class, it's kind of hard to see them come back from something like that. Just imagine the amount of dollars they've lost too. NCAA programs make a lot of money each year, especially teams that make it to the tournament. The loss of this recruiting class is easily going to cost them hundreds of thousands of dollars in the long run. Now, when I first heard about this, I didn't think it was too big of a deal. Obviously, losing the number one recruit in the country is huge, especially for a program that isn't known for basketball. This is the worst mistake in the program's history. It's one of the worst mistakes, I think, in college basketball recruiting history. And UW is going to feel the effects of this mistake for a very long time. Be sure to like and subscribe for more content like this in the future, and as always, until next time.